Episode 63, The Franchise, Daniel Ehrenberg, Resident Evil. Let's do it. Hey, folks. Henry Papali over here. How's everybody doing? I guess you can't answer that. I'm assuming you're doing well. All right. Let's do Resident Evil. You can email us at thefranchisepod at gmail.com. Let us know if you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Henry maybe doesn't know this, but the re- this episode, the next three episodes, were the reason that I started this podcast. Oh, I thought it was Friday the 13th. Well, that gave me the idea, but listen, I knew Resident Evil, the final chapter, was coming out, and I wanted an excuse to rewatch the first five. <laughs> And uh, here we well, are. Well, that is an elaborate scheme to uh-huh. watch Resident Evil. Hours my of my life to rewatch Resident Evil, to have the excuse. That's over a year of planning and uh, getting ready and involving somebody else. I'm, uh, like, I'm like the Umbrella Corporation. I, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I run everything. Wow. That's, uh, I, I, I didn't know that. Uh, that's, uh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's a, that's a lot of planning behind something like that. You know? All right. Res- Resident Evil. Let's just d- dive right in. Why not? Um, I, first of all, it's based on, it's the first thing we've done that's based on video games. You're right. right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you ever play these video games? <laughs> no, but that's not actually an absurd question because. They were popular. This- yeah, and when this came out, I was I played a lot in the arcade in my college, but I was a big Soul Calibur 2 guy. Yeah, this wasn't really an arcade game. I feel like yeah. you wanted to be like alone in the dark, not playing the game alone in the dark, but right. um, that's a different game, which has a movie with Tara Reid. Um, anyway, <laughs> Resident Evil. Wait, what has a movie with you? There's a video game, Alone in the Dark. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Got it. Um, no, Resident Evil, that's why they call it a survival horror game, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why there's a line in the movie, we're not going to survive this horror. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember playing a lot of Area 51 in the arcade. See, that's another that- first-person shooter. Th- this right. one, you're solving mysteries. There, uh, It's not all shooting. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. I played the first two, but I'm terrible at video games, so I, of course, didn't make it that far into either of them before getting bored. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, I, didn't know you, I didn't know you were terrible at video games. Um, you know, I'm pretty bad. I'm good at video games when they're cartoonish. Like, I'm good at Mario Kart or, yeah. uh, you know, whatever, stuff like that. Tetris. I'm good at Tetris. Yeah, I've always been pretty good at that. But, uh... Like, the only game I ever beat was um, Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. And it's just because it's well-written. Like, I wanted to know the end of the story. Yeah. So I, like, bought one of those, like, strategy guides. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it got me to the end of the game so I could find out what happened. Resident Evil didn't give me that same sense. But it, it I enjoyed the game enough that when this first movie came out, I saw it in theaters. Okay. All yeah. right. Sure. Sure. You're seeing all six of these for the first time. Yes, I had never seen them. I was positive I had never seen them, and I was right. Yeah, okay. I, just, I never saw them. Yep. All right. So, Resident Evil, the original, comes out March fifteenth, two thousand two, and it's written and directed by a fellow we've covered before on this podcast. That's right. Paul W. S. Anderson, who uh, w- you know did the first Aliens vs. Predator movies, the bad one, uh, or in my opinion, the better one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, originally, George Romero was going to direct Resident Evil. Hmm. Um, oh wow, that would have been different. Yeah, it, w- I mean George Romero, he's very old school, the the inventor of the zombie film genre with Night of the Living Dead. 
Yeah. And Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead and Diary of the Dead and Survival <laughs> of the Dead. He likes the dead. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fan. Yeah. Uh, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. He's, he's still around, George I'm gonna, Romero? I'm, I'm going to look it up right now. Cause I you feel like my... he maybe died like this past year, like in that I rash think... of 2016 deaths. I'm getting that feeling, too. We'll find out in a second. All right. He died July 16th, 2017. Oh, look. Whoa. Oh, wow. Just a few weeks ago. Oh, my God. Why wasn't that a bigger deal? That should have been a bigger deal. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Lung cancer. Yep. Can't smoke. No. Not good. Absolutely, absolutely not. Yeah. So uh, he he was going to make it like a real zombie-ish movie. I mean, but George Romero, he's never played a fucking video game in his life. I, I read that he hired, his, like he got his assistant to play the game and like write about it for him. <laughs> That's great. I like that. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, Paul W.S. Anderson, he's a video game guy. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, baby. He directed the uh, Mortal Kombat movie. Right, right, right. But yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know he actually played this stuff. No, yeah. he loves it. I, I feel like he's directed other video game movies. I feel like he's done, like, a bunch of video game movies. Am I wrong? Let's well, pull was, him I, up. I, I, yeah, I'm pulling <laughs> these up right now. All right. Um, well, we've talked about his whole fucking career because I'm a big fan. Right. Um, but uh, let's let's see real quick. Uh, no, I guess just Resident Evil and Mortal Kombat. All right. Yeah, I don't see anything. But still, I mean, this Resident Evil series, we're going to be talking about Paul W.S. Anderson a lot because he directed four of the six movies. Right. And wrote all six. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. this is his baby. Yeah, for sure. Because he doesn't have a huge output uh, in his filmography. It's not huge. So. It's not huge. I've seen all of his movies except for uh, two of them. <laughs> I've seen Event Horizon. Great. Alien, a, yeah, I agree. Uh, AVP. Mm. And um, that's it. And this. That's it. I I, didn't see I'm it, ready yeah. to tell you that Pompeii is watchable garbage. I'm yeah, right, I remember I, you <laughs> didn't care for that, I thought. It's yeah. watchable garbage. The oh. problem with Pompeii is your male lead is that Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. And, right. geez, that guy can't act. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of people he recruits that... Uh, that can't, can't act? I, I, I will say, the casting in Resident Evil... And I don't know what you think of these first two movies. Right. Now, you don't know anything yet. No. Right? But the casting improves as the series goes along. All right. It would right. almost have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. What were the stats? You know, oh, okay. <laughs> well, let, let's do all that, and then we'll get into our feelings on Resident Evil. Um, uh, came, budget of $33 million. Um, box office of $103 million. All right. Big, Big yeah. hit. But what we're going to keep an eye on with the Resident Evil films for the first time in the history of the podcast is worldwide gross versus domestic gross. Oh, okay. Because I'd like to welcome all of our Japanese and Chinese listeners out there who are coming at us for the first time for the Resident Evil episode. <laughs> all our German <laughs> listeners, welcome. Because Americans don't <laughs> super give a shit about Resident Evil. Uh, yeah. The yeah. reason there are six of these <laughs> is because they do really well overseas. Yeah. All right? Yeah. yeah. So, and it only gets bigger and bigger over the course of the series. So it made $103 million here. What, what did no, it no, do? no. It made 103 total. Oh, okay. Okay. That's worldwide gross. Uh, all right. 40 million of that is domestic. Oh, jeez. So more than half of its gross is yeah. overseas. Wow. I mean, the domestic, if, if you were just going by that, then this thing really didn't even, it was almost a flop. Oh, it, it is a flop if you're yeah. only considering domestic. Yeah. But we're not. You right. see, this movie came in at number 64 at the domestic box office. Okay. Right between... The Wild Thornberries movie 
All right? Uh-huh. Nickelodeon. Yeah. And Dana Carvey's the master of disguise. Oh, my God. Turtle, turtle. Yeah. Boy, I didn't rem- I didn't think that was uh, 2002. That, that That's like a real 95-er to me. The uh, master of disguise? Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like it came out in 1895. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Do you remember wow. the name of the main character in The Master of Disguise? No, because I never saw it. I, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Henry, Dana Carvey, a hero of ours. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Came up with the character Pistachio Disguise. All right. Oh, Dana. You feel good about that? Oh, boy, Dana. Yeah. Oh, man. There is uh, no Dana, only Zool. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, man. That's that's decent. That's de- a decent pull there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have my top ten favorite movies of 2002. How about you? I got it right in front of me. How about that? You want to do that list? Sure. All right. Go for it. Number ten. Directed by Dan's buddy, uh, Red Dragon. Oh, God. You have a Brett Ratner movie on your list. It's the only time. Jesus. My... Hey, it's, not, it's number 10. Yeah, still. And I still love that movie. So I've I'm... got 10 movies on here I'm very happy with. I am, too. I'm, I'm happy with my list. Number okay. m- number 10, I, I'd love to rewatch it, and we will for the podcast, but I have the first Spider-Man movie by Sam Raimi. That is my number nine. Interesting. Okay. My number nine is the Bret Easton Ellis adaptation, The Rules of Attraction. That's a very good movie. I hadn't seen that at the time we did this, but then when you gave me that box of videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have we talked about that on the podcast? <laughs> I don't know. That was in there, and I watched it, and I liked it a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I gave Henry for his birthday one year a giant box of most of my VHS collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still, I was still watching. I still had. I mean, obviously, I had DVD, but uh, I was still watching a lot of VHS. Uh, and it was uh, 2010. I remember it, and uh, so you you carried them to the bar. <laughs> yeah, I remember that was. I was sick that night. I w- I was drinking Dayquil at the bar, and to clear my sinuses, I did cocaine in the bathroom off of someone's keys. Right. Yeah. I remember that. I remember you remember that? that? I do. Yeah. 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 Great. Great times. All right, what's your number? I did not. I did not. I did not partake in the white powder. But, no, you uh, didn't. It was, you it, didn't. It was a good time, though. It was a good. That was a fun birthday. Great party. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you say uh, your number nine? Yeah, that was Spider Man. Oh right, right, right. Okay, what's uh, your eight? Panic Room. Ooh, not on my list. Great movie. Whoa. Yeah. Right. My number eight is Michael Moore's Bowling for Columbine, my my favorite Michael Moore film. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, my number seven is Confession. Sorry, Hollywood and Toto listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. Big fans. Uh, my number seven is Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Great movie. My, my number seven is uh, Vladislav Shvilnov, The Pianist. Not on my list. Mm. Mm. Uh, number six, 28 Days Later. Uh-huh. Uh, my num- that's not on my list. I'm not a fan of that movie. I'll tell oh, you yeah. what, 28 Days Later, not my favorite zombie film of 2002. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my number six is uh, uh, your favorite Paul Thomas Anderson film. Oh, God. <laughs> Punch Drunk Love. Ugh. I know, I know. Um... My number five is Bowling for Columbine. Ah, oh, my number five is Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're going to love my number four. Uh, that is uh, Signs. Signs? Yeah. I, look, I like Signs fine, but oh. that's high for Signs. Oh, I, I love that movie. Okay. Uh, my number four is The Great... Spike Jones, Charlie Kaufman adaptation, adaptation. Yeah, not on my list. That's um, insane. Yeah, I've had a lot of, 
I've had a weird relationship with that movie. I saw it in the theater, and I did not like it at all. Then I saw it again. I still didn't like it. And then I gave it a third try, and I did like it. But uh, it would be a long road for me to be getting it up there. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Uh, my number three is about Schmidt. That's also my number three. Oh, all right. Yeah. My number two is Gangs of New York. Not on my list. Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My number two is Todd Haynes's Far From Heaven. Oh, that's a that's a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not on my list. And my number one movie of 2002... Oh, this we're going to have the same one, I think. Yeah, it's it's for me, this was very easy. It's one of my favorite movies ever, mm-hmm. and of that, of that decade, uh, 25th Hour. Yeah, 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 25th Hour, Spike Lee's best of that era, uh, one of Ed Norton's best performances... Incredible cast, actually. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, Anna Paquin, probably the second best thing she's ever been in after Margaret. You got Barry Pepper in there, Brian Cox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great movie. If you haven't seen 25th Hour, do it up. God, you know, that's a movie that just never gained traction. You know, I I saw it uh, when I was in college, and it was playing at one theater. It was played for one weekend. And then I feel like I've spent the last 15 years telling people about it, and people are still like, what? Me like, too. Even... I feel like that should be a poster that's on dorm room walls and shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I I don't get it. I, I It just was... I think I our country's racist, Henry. Really? You think so? What I, leads you to believe that? I think... <laughs> <laughs> I do think that there are certain people that have... Because it's the kind of movie that people that love Fight Club would like or something. You know what I mean? Huh. And, uh, you know, I-, I feel like if David Fincher directed 25th Hour, more people would give it a chance. I think you're right. I think when people see Spike Lee's name... They expect a certain type of movie. S- yeah, certain people. Uh, they... <laughs> They, uh, they're just out right away. They're out. Yeah, and look, if the only Spike Lee movies you've seen are Girl 6 and She Hate Me, then I understand. But, uh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> 25th Hour is a gem. Oh, it's amazing. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the second best Paul Anderson in film. Paul W.S. Anderson. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil... Uh, is an important film in his career. It comes on the heels of the uh, Kurt Russell vehicle, Soldier, which he wrote and I think is still the highest budget movie he's ever made. Uh, I never saw it. It's not bad, but it's... It's the kind of movie, like, you you watch and you can't believe a studio invested this much money in it. (laughs) Because it's odd, and it's 1998, and it's Kurt Russell. Like, it's... Right. Yeah, um, so uh, he he gets the he goes back to his roots because his first Hollywood film after his indie debut, Shopping, was Mortal Kombat. Mm. So he gets the chance to do another big video game adaptation, and it's Resident Evil. Yeah, a zombie movie, but. Uh, there's no zombies until, like, probably... Oh, I wrote it down. 39 minutes in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's really more of an weird, atmospheric uh, thriller with delusions of the Matrix. (laughs) All right, well, you want me to just put it out there, then? Get into it. All right. I like this movie a lot. Oh, baby! <laughs> oh! Yeah. Relief yeah. sweeping Big. over me. <laughs> I I got to tell you, here's what I was expecting. I was expecting for you to hate these first two, but to at some point in the process of watching the six, develop a kind of Stockholm Syndrome and fall <laughs> in love with the franchise. But you like it right away. I did. I did. Uh, I thought right from the beginning it was very engrossing, very tight, good direction, gory and gross, but had that kind of W.S. Anderson kind of bizarre humor that's not quite in the Verhoeven type of humor, but like, it's like not self-serious, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's just, 
I You're thought right. it was there really is, good. There, there is a little Verhoeven in Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah, I, I found it genuinely exciting, and I actually that first forty minutes I thought was 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 part of the the best part of the movie. I mean, I I thought it was great, and I I actually didn't I, honestly I didn't until you just said it now honestly think of the Matrix once. Really, I, I didn't even think of no no I didn't. Um, I think it's better. Oh <laughs> Jesus! But, but I but I'm not a big you know I'm not a big fan of the Matrix. I mean, but I, I just I liked it because um, I just thought it was you know now from somebody like me who's never seen it and never played the video game and and has been you know totally now seen most of every zombie flick coming out. You know, I definitely wanted to, and I did I successfully abandoned the urge to just keep comparing it to other zombie movies because honestly I was looking at the year 2002 and uh, it was kind of before a lot of that so I couldn't even really like there was a temptation to say oh well it's it's ripping on uh, ripping off uh, 28 days later you know but it, it really it really isn't I and, think uh, I think there's plenty of shit in the Walking Dead that Resident Evil did first I, I think you're right yeah yeah and um no man look i had a good time in this movie i i i was it was fun it, it was not boring i mean um, they're quick too they, they, yeah wh what is it like 90 minutes this thing it was close. maybe it was an hour like, 40 yeah yeah the second one's shorter um and we'll get to that but um uh yeah i mean and i i also realized this was funny too um and I don't feel this way about this movie because I don't. I disagree with what it's got like a horrible rating on Rotten Tomatoes and all that. Oh shit. yeah, people hate these movies. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I I have no idea who's gonna listen to these podcasts. I'm just really <laughs> excited to be rewatching the Resident Evil yeah, movies. Yeah, but you know, I realized that um, one of my I guess it's just something I discovered maybe I guess doing this show was that something like Weekend at Bernie's. It is very hard for me to sit through a bad comedy. And I can sit through almost a bad anything. And I had never really realized that before. And I think that's another reason why I hated Weekend at Bernie so much. Because I just, comedies that are bad for me, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this, like, well, are just I, I, the I mean, worst... I I reject the premise that Weekend at Bernie's is bad. I know, I know you do. So, but, but pick anything. Pick any, you know... The Hard genre, bodies too. Okay, the genre of comedy is harder for me to get through if it's bad than any other genre. I can sit through a bad anything. I think, you know, I mean, bad dramas can be rough, obviously, but um, but well, I don't get it. I mean, Resident Evil. It, what what's the fucking problem? It's fun. It's not, you know. I, I some sometimes the the critics or a lot of them are. I don't understand. I mean, this one I don't get. I mean, I'm not saying there's no validity to their criticisms of stuff like this or even the second one, but this first one, I, I, I don't, I'm not on board. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get the problem. Sit down, enjoy yourself. It's fun, and it's short. And well, Mila I Joe think <laughs> yeah. I think it's easier to say now. Because I, I understand being a critic when this comes out. It's, there's a rash of video game movies. You you go to see this one. It's a fucking zombie movie. It's based yeah. on a video game. It's Paul W.S. Anderson. You know, it doesn't really have any stars in it. Like, and, and it, it's quick and gory and, and you know... Then it ends, and you're like, right, and it right. ends on a cliffhanger, and you're like, what the fuck is this? I I kind of get it, but like that's when you're sitting down to watch it. Like I've got to review this thing. What do I say? I, I right. think now watching the first Resident Evil movie, a full fifteen years after it came <laughs> out, uh, you uh, hey man. Sit down, enjoy the ride. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's a good point because I, I got to be honest, I can't lie to myself. Uh, I probably, if I had seen this in 2002, I would have been 23. I, I, I probably wouldn't have liked it at all. I mean, I didn't see it. I had no interest in when it came out. 
So I probably would have gone in there too with that attitude and probably dismissed it outright. So probably 15 years of watching, you know, zombie movies, horror movies, and and just age <laughs> has mm. just mellowed me to something like this where I'm just kind of like, calm the fuck down, everybody. It's just, <laughs> it's a mo- Also, it's called Resident Evil. Yeah, what that's you, a what stupid you, title. What do you think you're going to get out of it? Well, the original original Japanese title. Uh, this is a this is like a Harry Potter situation, Henry. Mm. Um, you know how the Harry Potter the first book is was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Yes, we've talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they made it for America. It was the Sorcerer's Stone because they didn't think kids would understand what the fuck a philosopher is. Um, right, Re- Resident Evil. Uh, the original title and still the title of the movies and the video games in Japan is Biohazard. Oh. And uh, they didn't think we know what that is. Not that, <laughs> I mean, Resident Evil, though, doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. And, and, and that's, I'm glad you said that because I was, I was sort of waiting for either in this type of movie somebody to to say it or for me to figure out what or who the Resident Evil was, and uh, not quite sure I still figured it out, but uh, I don't really care. No. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you want to give us the plot? No. <laughs> you should give us the plot, man. You've been uh, waiting a year. Oh, you don't want to do it? You want me to try? Can I you can do try. It? Because sure, I'll g- I'll get all up in in the fucking grill of the specifics. Because I, I, if we start talking about this movie, I'll I'll get into the Nemesis Project. Okay, <laughs> I'll get right. into the fucking the, you know all the Jill Vout the Hive and all right. But you're gonna you have know, to help. You're gonna have to help me along. The liquors. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna have to help me along. So I'm not sure. I will. I will. Let's do it. What you the you, fuck you was start. Happening. All right. Well, in. In one of my favorite location names, Raccoon City. Oh, the uh, worst, the dumbest. <laughs> Where is Raccoon City? I don't know, apparently, it's underground. No, oh. no, no. The hive is underground. Raccoon City. Okay, see, I already fucked up. Yeah, Raccoon City is like a suburban-looking place with also an urban area, right? Like a yeah, a yeah. And um, we we start in with. Uh, Mila Jovovich uh, waking up uh, naked in a bathroom. Well, there is... All right, maybe I should do this. Um, (laughs) Because there's a long prequel before we get to Mila Jovovich. I mean, not a a prologue. Okay, just do it. Uh, Well, you remember there's all this shit down in the hive where the the, uh, outbreak starts. Oh, that's first? Okay. Yeah, that's first. There's, There's really harrowing elevator stuff where they're trapped and the oh and, right wow yeah. I, God, that's great i thought that's yeah like, great okay and i'm forgetting it yeah yeah. a yeah, lady yeah, gets afraid. decapitated excellent yeah yeah always up for a good decapitation oh for sure but uh we don't see it it's it's sort of like uh implied decapitation which i, which I, was, I it's no it's fine it was very odd that he didn't show it yeah yeah well, he saves the gore for later. I was going to say, he makes up for it. Yeah. He makes up for it. Um, I'll tell you what he doesn't save. <laughs> the boobs. We get those right away, baby. <laughs> we <laughs> we cut right away to Mila Jovovich, and she's waking up naked in a bathtub. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like some sort of industrial shower or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know... It's hard for me because I I love Mila Jovovich in these movies. And yeah. I love Alice as a character. Yeah. And I want to, like, you know, people this year were so excited about Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, an action franchise with a female lead. And I'm like, hey, guys, you know, like two months ago, Resident Evil the final chapter came out. They've been making these fucking things for 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> but, and you but got, a, nobody you got a female shit. lead who's great. And you got Underworld too, right? She that was another one. Yeah, those are terrible. Um, well, I'm just I'm just saying there was I know, a female I know. lead. In that. 
Look, but nobody, nobody cares, least. man. But Alice Wonder to Woman. me, Alice to me is so good. Like she belongs in the same lineage as like Ripley and Sarah Connor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, she's yeah. great. J- James Cameron, a fan of the Resident Evil films, by the way. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I changed my mind. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you can trust his taste. Can I? Probably, right? What is he like? I don't know. I, I, and I, I would never go to so far as to say I trust his taste. I if bet I he listens the- to a lot of Billy Joel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I heard that James Cameron liked something, it's actually something, if I read this statement, I probably am going to be very skeptical right off the bat. But uh, not saying I'm gonna, it's going to be bad, but uh, I know that seeing that is not a reaction I like to hear. Okay, okay. Anyway. So, uh, Jovovich, she's waking up. She doesn't know who she is. Right. She's in this mansion. She's got amnesia. Then a, a guy shows up claiming to be a cop. He's played by Eric Mabius. Yeah. Who's great pretty, name. He, he's nobody, that guy. It's a great name, though. Yeah. yeah. He'll I be hope in your that's superhero his count, though, right? All right. Yes, he is. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then a bunch of guys in masks break in, right? And uh, th- what what's going on here? One yeah. of those guys in masks is um, the black guy that was like on the ship in Alien vs. Predator. So uh, that's right, Colin Salmon. Yeah. yeah. He, so you know, franchise crossover. crossover. Paul W. Yeah. S. Anderson crossover. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. They and are the, um, uh, but the only character of those people that really matters is Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Playing the character with the delightful name Rain Ocampo. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> her first line is blow me, um, as I'm pretty sure Michelle Rodriguez's first line is in any movie she's ever been in. Yeah, she's really got the uh, Vasquez role. I, I just kept thinking that in this movie. They even, not just because she's Hispanic, but even the situations they put her in are very. What's Vasquez? From Aliens. Oh, okay. The tough Latino Marine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's even like in a few situations that mirror almost identically uh, aliens. Um, you know, like being hurt and being protected by somebody a little bit weaker, and then that kind of thing going on. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez, an actress who seems like she's never had a good day in her life. <laughs> yes. Okay, you said it. Yeah. You know, I. I don't have anything against her. I, I, I don't really... What was it? The girl fight was her breakout, right? Her, yeah, her, her, I think her, her, her this, y- yes, I think this was her second movie after Girl Fight. Yeah, I, I don't have anything against her, and, and I don't even think that she's a bad actress, but she, of anyone in the cast, she was the one that I... And I have somebody in the second movie that fits this bill, too. She's just constantly gl- glowering... A glowering, she glowering. snarls. She snarls all the time, and I mean, yeah. it's a little much. It's a little <laughs> much because everyone else, uh, I don't know. They, uh, they, 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 they didn't. They seem to have a little bit more dimensions. Not too many, but uh, you know, kind of do their part. And but she's just never changes. It's Look, kind of they, all, they yeah. cast her based on that girl fight, and she's yeah. doing. She's that's what she's doing in this movie. Right. All right. Girl fighting. Yeah, we'll have ample time to talk about Michelle Rodriguez when we you get You don't to... give spoilers. I didn't say we were doing it now. Now you uh, spoiled it. <laughs> no, we're not. No uh, whatever, whatever. We might be talking about her soon. We'll um, be talking about her soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I did want to say right away. We're doing I, Blue I, Crush. We're, we're doing Blue Crush. We're doing Blue Crush. We could have done that in the summer extravaganza. Uh, yeah. I do want to say that I loved one of my favorite parts of this movie, and, and I had never, I don't think I've ever seen this before. I, I love the production design of having, and it's probably from the video game, but I'm not going to keep saying that because maybe a lot of it is, so you can tell me if it isn't. I love the idea of the mansion that yeah. is like above it. I, I thought that was such a cool idea because it really threw me off. 
as a viewer as to where this was going and where the fuck I even was. And I love the cover of it being like over the hive. Like I love that. I've never seen like, you, you know, they could have easily gone for the whole uh, facility thing, you know, a facility above the facility, but they go for this mansion look and it's very jarring and comforting in a weird way. And I thought it was great. Let me, uh, listeners can tell me if I'm wrong here, but uh, I believe the Hive, which is the underground facility where they're doing all these experiments and shit, where the outbreak happens, I believe that's an invention of the movie. Mm. Okay. Um, The mansion, I I remember the first Resident Evil game, a lot of it taking place in a mansion. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I think what he did was he came up with the idea for the Hive and he wanted the mansion to still be in the movie. And so he like cross engineered these ideas, which I think works really well. Yeah, it did for me. Yeah. 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 So you can continue with the plot if you want. So they they go underground, they get on a, a train. Uh, that's going to take them further underground, and then all of a sudden, James Purifoy shows up. All right? <laughs> yeah. James Purifoy, an actor. <laughs> I have a lot of. What do we know him from? <laughs> Listen, I know him from The Following and The Following Only, and I want to talk oh. about it right now. The Following was a <laughs> terrible TV show that I watched three seasons of. All the Kevin Bacon seasons. thing, right? That's right. Kevin Williamson created it. That's why I watched it. All right, right, right. Um, Kevin Bacon was the star of it, and the other star of it was this fella, James Purifoy, who is a British actor, and and I, I want to stress that. He's a British <laughs> actor. Um, and yeah. his character on the following was a cult leader and serial killer who was obsessed with Edgar Allan Poe, and he would just constantly oh. quote Edgar Allan Poe, and it was super stupid. Sounds good. Yeah, he would always be like, "Quote the Raven" and shit like that. And oh, uh, boy. yeah, and you know, he was he was bad in that show. <laughs> I don't, I'm looking at him now, and I don't think I've seen him in anything. I, I guess I saw John Carter, and he's somebody in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, he was V in V for Vendetta before he uh, he left. And your your favorite actor, Hugo Weaving, took over. He, oh, stuntman Hugo Weaving, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, James Purifoy is so bad in Resident Evil, man. I, I didn't think he was that bad. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I think this is now the worst American accent we've covered. Ooh, I wouldn't say that. It is crazy. Uh, like, it took me... Uh, like, I didn't realize for a while that he was okay. doing an American accent. I, I, I uh... I don't think I looked him. I will no. I didn't look him up before the movie. I, I, I didn't know he was British. I didn't. I didn't even pay attention to it. Honestly, he doesn't have that many lines, does he? No one has that many lines. <laughs> it's, it's it's not a wordy Good script. Good point. Yeah. Uh, it didn't bother me, but okay. Uh, I'd have to go back into our archives to see the worst American accent, but I'll take your word for it if that's your opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, we talked about maybe Allison Duty and Major League. Two. Oh yeah, dude, this isn't worse than that. I think it is. Really? Yeah, he's my LVP. Ooh, wow. Okay, all right. So a lot of this movie is just that, or at least the first like forty minutes is them sort of trouncing through this uh, underground facility, the Hive. And looking for clues and stuff, and uh, yeah. the the first thing they find is pretty much the 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 set piece of the film, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's the laser hallway. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to agree with you, and I, I wouldn't call it the set piece of the film. But wait, you mean that? By set piece, you mean like where the most memorable thing happens? Or listen, you mean- the oh. reason to see Resident Evil, yeah, my yeah. friend, is laser <laughs> hallway. 
<laughs> I definitely uh, took note. Yeah, yeah. Laser hallway. <laughs> laser hallway. So laser beams, laser. they they start going down this hallway, up and down the hallway. <laughs> And you've got to dodge them. You jump around. It seems so video gamey, but I don't think this is something from the video game. Um, little entrap, little entrapment scenario. Am I right? Oh, baby, a little <laughs> yeah, a little Ocean's Twelve action. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they uh, they're jumping to dodge, and then one guy gets whacked in the foot, and his feet fall off and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy gets hit in the head and his scalp comes off it's awesome and then it's down to just um the black guy with the really bad goatee what, what's the actor's name colin colin salmon colin salmon of course colin another Holliday. brit yes yeah um doing a much better <laughs> accent than james pierre boy by the way um and he yeah. oh there's a, a lot of um European actors in all of these movies because it's made by a German production company. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed um, that. So, uh, then all of a sudden the laser turns into like a grid pattern. Yes, sir. And then he's just like, fuck, can't dodge that, baby. And, no. uh, yeah, he falls apart. With he someone. is, can I say the word? He is vivisected. Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think we've encountered a vivisection yet. Uh, Friday the 13th was coming close, but Jason couldn't figure that one out. He'd have to rig something pretty elaborate. So this is our first vivisection, I Are think. Are you calling Jason stupid? Yeah. I. <laughs> He's very creative, so I don't want to take it away from him, but I, I don't think he had the money or the means to create a vivisector. Yeah. He doesn't need to. He'll just get you in a sleeping bag and whack you against the tree. I think I just invented that word, vivisector. Uh, Ooh. No, I'm pretty sure there must have been a shitty comic book character from the 90s called vivisector. <laughs> I'm going to Google it right now. Uh, a C-list villain. There vivisector. must have been. There absolutely must have been. Oh, man. In Dark Horse Comics. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to go so far as to say I think it might be Marvel. There's no way there was a character named that. If not Marvel, maybe Image? I can't Vivisector. It. My friend, Vivisector... <laughs> Get out. ...is an openly gay intellectual mutant featured as a member of Ecstatics by Marvel Comics. His first appearance is X-Force number 117. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus, right. just when you think you've heard everything. Wow. He's sort of a wolf man kind of character. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. I stand corrected. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't trademark that. All right. His mutant it. powers first manifested during his studies at Harvard University. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Because he's it's never. It's, it's never uh, like the College of William and Mary. No, like no, no, no. The, the community college of Long Island. It's just Harvard. Yeah. Well, he's smart. He wouldn't be at the fucking Nassau community. <laughs> Listen, I've met the dregs from Nassau Community <laughs> College. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so 39 minutes in, we get our first zombie. And... Uh, there's not a lot of let up from there. We we experiment with zombies. There's zombie dogs at one point. Yeah. Uh, yeah that was got, cool. She she kicks one in the head, man. She does. It's like a sweet jump kick. That was awesome. I love that. I actually thought when she crawled up the wall to the ceiling, I was like, please kick the dog in the head, and she did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're razzling dogs all over these movies. Those dogs pop up again in uh, the second one. They sure do. Yeah. A little too much. Uh, I feel like this is a series that, like, expands outward. Yes. And if I may criticize the second one before we get into it, there's just a little too much repeating shit that happened in the first one. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, if I have a complaint about the treatment of zombies in Resident Evil, a little too much explaining what zombies are. Like, mm. we, we get it. 
You know, no. it's like it's Did like their get, tissues yeah, right. been reanimated, and they only have one thing they need to do is feed. And like they keep shooting them in the stomach. It takes them forever to figure out, like, just do a headshot. Yeah, well, they've never seen a Romero movie. I guess speaking of him, so no, they don't know how to kill zombies. You know? I don't think art exists in the world of Resident Evil. Like, there's Probably never not. been a movie. <laughs> there's n- right? There, uh, there's no pop culture references. No, so but I, I sort of appreciated that. It's 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 so happy to be in its own vacuum. This movie. It uh, it is. It is in its own vacuum. And yeah. the great thing about Resident Evil is it expects you to remember shit. And that's why you <laughs> yeah. got to rewatch all of them because you're yeah. lost. I uh Henry, I skipped the third Resident Evil. Oh. Yeah. Really? I did. And I saw the fourth one in theaters. And I had no idea what the fuck was going on. <laughs> I assume you remedied that, obviously. Oh, you better believe it. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I've watched these movies a few, uh, probably, I think I've seen the first two, three times, four and, three and four, twice, mm-hmm. something like that. And the fifth okay. one only once. And I haven't seen the sixth one yet. Right. Oh, right, right, right. I'm excited to close out the the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, I wanted to be in the middle of just. I know you're still doing plot, but uh, we did have another franchise crossover with the composer. Yeah, Marco Beltrami. Yeah, Die Hard four and five and Scream. That's right. All the screams, <coughs> right? Uh, yeah, I think so. And yeah. and uh, I'll say the the music in in this is is decent. It's it, it's a little too much of it. If I, I would take a little bit of it out. Um, well, but. I'll I'll tell you what he's um, he's not composing the music alone. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, he has a friend in tow by the he name sure of Marilyn does. Manson. Yes, he does. And it's it's Marilyn Manson. You know, he went through that glam phase in the late nineties, which I I can enjoy. Okay. But in two thousand two, we are deep into new metal. Mm. And so too much of the score in this movie is just electric guitars going like dum 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 and Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. And then when we get to the closing credits, did you stick around? Uh, Not really. There's three songs in the closing credits. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not my genre at all. Well, me neither, but I was curious what they were because they were so bad. So we get a Slipknot. Ugh. We get a Coal Chamber. Okay. And we get a Fear Factory. <laughs> Just garbage new metal bands. I mean, probably taken right off of the soundtrack to Scream 3. It's, yeah, sure. They, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And it makes Resident Evil feel more of its time yeah. than anything else in the movie. I agree. I agree. Although the and, CGI on the liquor is is pretty god awful. Yeah, it is. It is. I wasn't sure if that was like intentional or it was a budget constraint because it wasn't a huge budget. So I, I didn't for this type of movie. You know, might I, have I been a budget constraint because the second movie has a slightly higher budget and they look a little better. Yeah, I will say about Marco Beltrami, uh, he's got a lot of credits to his name, a lot. And um, the one I remember, I mean, I've seen, and I've seen a ton of the movies he scored, but the only score that stands out that I remember really liking, and actually he was nominated for an Oscar for it, um, was 310 to Yuma, which I know, I can't remember if you even saw that movie. I did. I enjoyed that movie very much. Yeah, uh, it's really good. And his I score, wrote a review of that movie for my college newspaper. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. So he's a, he's a talented guy. We're not, he's not a hack. I would not call this guy a hack. Um, by any no, means. he's good. I like Marco Bell. Yeah. I've always liked the fucking Scream score. Yeah, I, I wasn't a big... It didn't stand out to me, but but he's done a lot of stuff. He just did Logan as well, and uh, The Shallows. Yeah. Yeah. The Shallows, one of my favorites. Yeah, I know. I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right. So where where are we? We're like plot wise a little bit. We're still <laughs> you know they're still dealing with the zombies. At one point they're trying to get back onto that train to get out of there. Mila Jovovich has a hold of both the the T virus they call it <laughs> and the uh, the um, remedy whatever the you know. uh, antidote. That's right. 
<laughs> um, to get out of there, their tech guy who shut the uh, laser hallway off earlier um, has to sacrifice himself. This uh, this tech guy's name is Kaplan. Didn't look Jewy to me, but uh, you got to assume his name is Kaplan. Uh, I assume they gave him that name because he's the tech guy. He's a little smarter than the rest. Uh, he probably studied at Harvard, if we look at his bio. Yeah, he didn't go to NASA. Um, and then we get a sweet heel turn from James Purifoy. Yeah. Yeah. Where we find out that he works for the Umbrella Corporation and uh, in an executive capacity. And and he is like a guy that came up with the T-virus. Yeah. Right? Uh, or something to that No, effect. he didn't come up with it, but he, he wanted to make money off it. He wanted to sell it. Right, he, right, right, he right. He wanted to sell it, so he actually wasn't. I, don't, I mean, he was a company man, but from what I gathered, he wasn't even doing what they would have wanted him to do. Because one, And I say that only because in the second one, we sort of figure out a little bit more about their ultimate uh, goal. Right. Uh, the T-virus was um, sort of a cure, like a disease right. cure, uh, that was created by um, the second movie's Jared Harris character. Right. And uh, James Purifoy wanted to give it some kind of military uh, use, and yeah. so th and that's what Alice is, right? Alice is yeah, like a super soldier infected by the T virus. Yeah, at that, uh, not in the first one though. She's still a normal human being, um, and and they were they had like a relationship that where he was under the impression that she would be all down with him selling it and they could go off into the sunset together but uh, he doesn't he makes a big mistake because she's not like that she's not a bad person and when she figures it out from her memories coming back she uh she's not having it no. and i gotta say one of the things about this movie i liked uh, another thing was that uh, I, I didn't see that heel turn coming I didn't yeah. see any. I didn't see anything coming in this movie. <laughs> you know why? Because it's you just along for the ride, man. It's a fun, quick movie. It, it doesn't yeah. give you time to like theorize. Right, right. I didn't need to. I didn't want to. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I. I felt. I felt that once you find out James Purifoy is a bad guy, he should have just started speaking in his British accent. <laughs> that would have been cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, non sequitur, but uh, this movie was on Ebert's most hated movies. I know. He hated all of these fucking movies. Yeah. Whatever, Ebert. Well, you own one of those books, don't you? Oh, yeah. I don't think it's in the, those books. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe the first one is, because I kind of remember reading him talk about the laser hallway. Oh, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so James well, Purifoy gets eaten by a liquor. A, a yeah. liquor is like a, a pure version of the T virus, you know. Oh, okay, thank you. I wasn't sure because they all they also don't call them those in the first movie. I just they're just that. a thing from the video game. <laughs> like when yeah, they wanted right. to give you something tougher than a zombie, a liquor would show up. Right, right. They're these big monsters with long tongues. And uh, oh wait, or what are the? I thought so. What are the dogs called? Those are just dogs. Oh, I thought those were liquors. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. They're just zombie dogs. Just mean Dobermans. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, got it. Uh, Rotting Dobermans. Yeah. The Red Queen is another character in this movie who's like a little girl robot who kind of explains the plot to them. I thought that was very cool. And then I wanted to ask you about what's with the Alice in Wonderland tie-ins here. Oh, I think that's just a Paul W.S. Anderson thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Because Alice isn't a character from the games. Oh, okay. okay. Like the character in the second movie played by Sienna Guillory, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jill Valentine. I remember her being in the games. Okay. And then there's a character played by Allie Larder in the third one, and she's from the games. But I think Alice is just an invention of Paul so that's, Anderson. So he's just having fun with some literature. And, like Alice and it's Blank. the most obvious bullshit. I hate right, Lewis right. Carroll references, but right. <laughs> yeah, they're they're used a lot in a lot of things. Too much with the Lewis Carroll, but yeah. like uh, whatever. Uh, she, the Red Queen, the little girl robot, 
I guess was designed by her dad. Um, and uh, I, we, I think there's like there's one line that creeped me out where she goes. I've been a bad, bad girl. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, your dad wrote that into your program? That's gross. What else can this fucking hologram do? Yeah, it was scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So the end of the movie comes and uh, they they escape from the hive, but um, er- the Eric Mabius character and Mila Jovovich are separated. Eric Mabius is taken into something called the Nemesis Program, which we'll come back in the second one. And Mila Jovovich um, again wakes up, uh, you know, not remembering how she got there in like a lab. Um, right in the nick of time at the end of the movie. We saw her boobs earlier. We get a sweet shot of her vagina. Um, <laughs> sort of veil. It's sort of veiled, isn't it? No, sort man. Of... Oh, all right. Okay. It's right there. Oh. Because it's, it's her... shocking when you see a vagina in a movie. Like you see yeah. boobs, they're a dime a dozen. We just watched right. two hard bodies movies. Right, right, right. Yeah, but... I guess you're right. I guess I thought her leg was like sort of obscuring. But, no, we yeah. see like pubic hair. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and that's the end of the movie. She escapes from this lab. Uh, she grabs some guns, and Raccoon City is a uh, dead zone with like yeah. a, a, it's a you know a, a war zone. Great ending. Great ending, and that's that's the setup for the sequel. Yeah, and and that's your Resident Evil right there. Yeah, man, and uh, I love that ending because. You know, it, it also reminds you, not that you needed reminding, but it reminds you that none of this took place, like, uh, above ground, like the whole movie was contained. And it's so it's a you little, get... it's actually a little too claustrophobic for me, this particular Resident Evil movie. Hmm. Okay. I didn't find that, but uh, I could see where one would think that, but uh, mm. didn't bother me. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, MVP, LVP? MVP's Mila Jovovich. Agreed. I love her in these movies. She's giving a legitimately good performance. She's sexy and strong and, like, I mean, it is a lead performance. Like, to me, like, Mila Jovovich, I only ever see her starring in Resident Evil movies. Why <laughs> Why isn't she in, like, a lot of shit? I don't know, man. I, I only had, I mean, I remember her, her in The Fifth Element and I hate As that Lilu. movie. As Lilu. Lilu. Fucking horrible movie. And uh, I remember her recently, though. Well, not recently. Now it's seven. You're gonna bring ago. up Stone. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's about it. I mean, I don't. I never saw Joan of Arc, or uh, I, I don't know. So I, I don't know what I really even know her from. I mean, I love her from Dazed and Confused. She has a oh, tiny right. role in that movie, but uh, right. and she's great in um, Cuffs. The great Kristen Slater movie, Cuff. She's in that? She's the female lead in that, and it's really creepy because Mila Jovovich, as an actress at the time, was 16 years old. Oh. Okay. And she's just bone zone and Kristen Slater all over that movie. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, all right. Cuffs. Um, Cuffs. A great movie. <laughs> I love it. Um, I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do yourself a favor. I'd never seen it until pretty recently, and I loved it. Okay. All right. That was when. Remember, I went through like a little phase for a second. I watched that in Career Opportunities. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you. I thought you were gonna say like a dog cop phase where you watch like Turner and Hooch and Canine. Oh, well, just sort of like minor '80s, early '90s classics that I'd never bothered to see before. I see. Yeah, I'll probably never uh, have the pleasure, but. Uh... Okay. All right. So your LVP is James uh, Purifoy. Purifoy. My LVP, I'm, I'm it's reluctant, but, uh, you know, I'll make up for it later, I'm sure. But uh, Michelle Rodriguez, this is a okay. little, little much. Rodriguez this. does, I like that she's sort of the second lead of the movie, and she gets turned into a zombie and gets killed. Yes, yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, it's, it's a good move. Um, I, I like Michelle Rodriguez, but I think Mila Jovovich is so strong in the movie that she sort of overpowers M- Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, it's true. It's almost like two people vying for the lead spot in a way. And, sure. Uh, 
I mean, my my favorite thing Michelle Rodriguez has ever been in is, of course, Lost. Uh, I, I right. love Ana Lucia Cortez. My favorite Michelle Rodriguez moment <laughs> in history is when she shoots that guy on Lost and then says, I was pregnant. <laughs> okay. That's my catchphrase for her. Every time I see Michelle Rodriguez in everything, I think, I was pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember her in Lost. That was before I tuned out. So I do remember her. Yeah. Um, all right. Star rating for you. Uh, I'm going to give this one three. This is not possible. You're giving it higher. Yeah. <laughs> Was this a trap? By the Umbrella Corporation? <laughs> no, no, it's just that, it, you know, I've seen all of them. Well, except for the last one. And there are movies later in the series that I will give higher grades to. Okay. I I was going to give it a three, and then I figured, you know what, man? Fuck it. I'm going four. I uh, love uh, it. Uh, nothing yeah. makes me happier than that. <laughs> I didn't really have any, you know, big problems with it. It's totally entertaining. I, I, I would recommend the movie to people. I would say, yeah, have a good time. Enjoy yourself. I, I recommend it to people all the time. You know, and it's not an ironic recommendation. It's not being trying to be funny. It's like, it, just just watch the movie. It's fun. You know? Check it out. Resi Evil. Love that's it. Ac- that's actually how I wrote it on my uh, sheet. Resi, <laughs> Resi nice. Evil. Nice. Uh, uh, I have a superhero count. Oh, right. Well, Eric Mabius. Eric yes. Mabius in this movie. Uh, such a boring performance, but, not, you know, not bad, just boring. Not his uh, fault, yeah. He, it was originally supposed to be David Boreanaz, though, and, oh. and then he had to, like, do another season of Angel or something. I, I kind of wish it was him. Yeah, he, he, he would have probably been given a little more dynamic dynamism, but uh, yeah. that's, this guy's fine. So then you named him. So what was he in? Well, he's he's the he's the third crow, right? Yeah, the there crow salvation. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a returning one. Colin Salmon uh, was in um, two things: Punisher, War Zone. <clears throat> As uh, I already said this prior when we did AVP, he played a character named Paul Budlansky. Sure. I sure. think I made the joke back then. I can make it again. It's been enough time, right? You can repeat sure, a joke. Sure, sure. Uh, he's the Polish black character in Punisher. Because there's a lot of Polish black people. You can repeat a joke as much as you want. There, there used to be this gay comedian named Ant, and uh, he'd come out. And his first joke, I, every time I saw him, it was for years. It was the Never same heard joke. of him. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um, do you recognize my accent? That's right. <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he was he also, <laughs> he was also in Arrow and may still oh, be. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. I, yeah, Walter. I think he's like recurring on that show. Walter Steele. Uh, <laughs> Walter Steele. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, DC. Yeah. Great. Vivisector is a better name than that. Uh, it is. Um, now here's a guy who's in this movie who I don't, I can't even identify because they call him in the credits Doctor Blue, but I don't know who the fuck he was. Joseph all, May. All the characters that from that like pre Milagrovich yeah. sequence at the beginning in the credits have names like Doctor Red, Doctor Blue. I assume they're taken from the video game, but they don't make any sense in the context of the movie. Okay, all right, good. It wasn't just me. Anyway, that guy was in something I've never heard of, but uh, not a shocker. Uh, Batman Black and White Motion Comics. Uh, he played Superman. Oh, uh, all right. yeah, it was one one of those, I guess you know, showing panels and then yeah, thing, yeah, right? they, Isn't that they've what? done those for a lot and of stuff. Come, that'll come up in the second one. Uh, oh. And then number four, finally, one of my favorite actors, actually, who is only given you only see his eyes. He's another one of the doctors who I only noticed at the end. Jason Isaacs, uh, you know him. Jason Isaacs was meant to have a big role in the series, and then. Uh, so they're like setting him up in this first one. You yeah. hear him, but you don't see him. And uh, that character is recast for the rest of the series. And they changed the character's name, Henry. Yeah, I noticed that. As a shout out, in future films, that character's name is Dr. Isaacs. 
Oh, he's that. Oh, okay, he's that one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, is that why they did that? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, a Jason Isaacs reference. Well, that's nice. That's good. Um, mm-hmm. He was in four fucking things. He was in Electra. Mm-hmm. He played a character named DeMarco. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think in... he might be the guy she's supposed to kill in that movie. Oh, all right. I never saw it. So, uh, mm. I did see, uh, I think I saw Batman Under the Red Hood. He plays Ra's al Ghul, your favorite villain. Sure, sure. Uh, he also played Green Lantern, Emerald Knights. He played Sinestro. Look at that. Getting and all the uh, villain roles. Big, big villain roles. And in Justice League, he played Lex Luthor in one of the cartoons. So. How about that? Yeah, he'd be good. He's a good villain guy. I like Jason Isaacs. He's a fine actor. I really like him. He's great as the villain Lucius Malfoy in those Harry Potter movies. I don't remember him. I only saw the first couple, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah he's, he, he pops up in the second one for the first time, I think. But he's in, like, all of them after he's that. He's a great villain in The Patriot by your hero, Roland Emmerich. <laughs> sure, yeah. He's really good in The End of the Affair, which is a totally uh, Henry movie, but it's a great performance. <laughs> sure, sure. He's in a lot of stuff. He's in a lot good, of stuff. Good, uh, he's good uh, you know, because it's me. I'll bring up a TV show that only lasted one season. but uh, <laughs> I might even know. I, yeah. Awake. Yes, I almost watched it because of him, but I chose not to. Was that a wise choice? Interesting show. No, good show. Uh, I, I believe that show was on when we were living together. I kind of remember watching that in our oh. old apartment. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. And I wanted to give a little shout out. I was, I don't know, I don't really ever do this. She's not a superhero count, but the actress Liz May Bryce. She played one. Of, she played another character called Medic, and she's one of back. She's actually one of those. Um, uh, umbrella soldiers in the black she's like one of the good guys she gets vivisected i believe or or in that sequence she's killed somehow she might be the decapitated one she's a actress from avp she's a crossover and she is into uh very good tv shows that i watched uh black mirror and uh dead set another zombie <laughs> movie both british uh, things so uh, okay liz may bryce and that's that's Resident Evil. I gave it a higher rating than Dan. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> all right, Henry, uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You? <laughs> no, talk? you're not. Yes, I am. I have to go too. Okay, then let's pause, and we'll be back after this. <laughs> well, there won't be a break for you, but we'll be back. All right. Oh, I feel so much better. All right. Me let's, too. <laughs> let's talk about the. Resident Evil Apocalypse, all right? Uh, Here's the second one. It comes a mere two years later. Paul W.S. Anderson is back to write, but he's gotten the opportunity to direct Alien vs. Predator. That's what I figured happened. Yeah. Yeah. So he hands over the directing reins to a fellow named Alexander Witt. I have no idea how he got this job. It's his only directing credit. Yeah, yeah. He, he and, now uh, works, it shows. He works second unit for like Ridley Scott. Did you know that? I read that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's kind of a second unit guy on a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he's he's uh, his his DP credit is on Body of Lies, that that Ridley Scott movie. Oh yeah, I actually like that. I know you did. Um, <laughs> Resident Evil Apocalypse was released. Uh, September 10th, 2004, a budget of $45 million, a worldwide box office of $129.3 million. Yes, sir. All right. Now, domestically, it made $51 million. Jeez. Mm Mm-hmm. Now I I really see why you want to track this throughout the series. They love them overseas. And, And again, I'll say that that's a fucking flop here. Yeah, I mean seven million bucks or whatever as a. Gr- I mean Jesus Christ! No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Budget of forty-five, box office of fifty-one. Right. Really, that that's a flop. But box office of one hundred twenty-nine, if you count worldwide. No, 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 no. I know. I'm saying here though. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Here it was number sixty-four at the box office. <laughs> oh. Between animated flop, Home on the Range, and. That Joel Schumacher Phantom of the Opera with Gerard Butler. Oh, my God. I forgot that existed. Yeah. 
Ooh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Terrible, uh, terrible everything involved in that. Ooh. I, I didn't see the second one in theaters. But I saw the second it right... second Phantom of the Opera? No, the second Resident <laughs> Evil, man. But I saw it right when it came out on uh, DVD there. Uh, I was working at Blockbuster at the time, I believe. Because I kind of remember watching that Phantom of the Opera when I was working at Blockbuster. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I have here the top Music ten the highest... Night. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have the top ten... You know, I when I was in... Um, Marching band in high school. I did uh, three songs from Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Music <laughs> of the Night as well. Huh? It was the rage. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. I, I have the top ten highest grossing movies of 2004. I don't know if we covered this one yet. I don't know if we did either, and I have my top ten of that year, which it does not look familiar to me. So Okay. Yeah. So, um, t- highest grossing... Do you have any guesses just off the top of your head? Oh, boy. I, everything on my list, I... All right, I'm going to get in the top ten. I'm going to yeah. say Fahrenheit 9-11. No. I did really well. It was the highest grossing documentary of all time at the time. Yeah, so, I know, but, but it's not top ten. No, okay, but, 2004. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. Number ten is a very Robert Zemeckis Christmas. Oh, uh, Polar Express. Yep, that's right. Uh, saw, it and, saw it and liked it. Polar, really? Yeah, I did. That uh, is not sorry. a good movie, man. Sorry, I saw it with my girlfriend, was very moved. Okay. <laughs> Number nine is uh, the first part of a Nick Cage franchise. Oh, National Treasure? That's right. Yes. Number eight. Is the second part of uh, an espionage franchise? The second part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Born supremacy. Oh, jeez, that was easy. I, okay. N- number seven, a classic Roland Emmerich film. Day after tomorrow. That's right. That's number cool. six, Alfonso Cuarón's entry into a franchise. Uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The only Harry Potter movie I saw in theaters. Mm. Number in five. I'm, IMAX. <laughs> okay. Number five, the best Fantastic Four movie ever made. <laughs> Boy, I uh, I don't know Rise of the Silver Surfer or the first one. No, The Incredibles. Uh, <laughs> That is a really fun movie, and there you go. Yeah. Number yeah. four, we have a Ben Stiller sequel. Meet the Fockers. That's right. Man, I'm doing pretty good. It. Yeah. Number three, your boy Mel. Okay. Uh, 2004. That's right. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, happy Easter, Henry. I still don't know. The Passion of the Christ. Oh, wow. Oh, right. Yeah, I saw that in theaters. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Number two, we have a superhero sequel. Spider-Man 2. That's right. And number one, can you believe it, an animated sequel? Uh, hmm, 2004. DreamWorks. Uh, Ice Age? Shrek Two. Oh, all right, all right. I got like five or six of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Now. Three. All right. Now, uh, what's your top ten movies? Your favorites of two thousand four, the year I graduated high school. <laughs> the year I graduated college. Oh. <laughs> Because it took me a long time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> if, if, if our listeners have been paying attention for a year, I was not 21 or 22 in 2004. <laughs> no, you are eight years older than I am. <laughs> I had just turned 26. But I didn't go into college right after uh, high school, everybody. All right? Who cares? All right, all right. Nobody cares at all. All right. Boy, I'd redo this list if I could. <laughs> not me. I'm I'm into my list. I'm not. Although I'm happy about it because it reflects 
what we were doing at the time. And I, I think maybe I wouldn't redo it. Who knows? Here we go. Uh, number 10, Ray. <laughs> oh, Henry. Well, I'd say I prefaced it, didn't I? I have my number 10 is Hotel Rwanda. Okay. Yeah. My, my number nine is a movie I bet you never saw, uh, Vera Drake. Yeah, I never saw that. Great movie. Stick by that. My number nine is another Charlie Kaufman, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Number nine? Yeah. Ooh, okay. This is a good year. I'm happy with my list. All right. Um, number eight, I put Garden State, and I'm happy with that. Okay. Garden, Garden State doesn't really hold up. I've tried to watch it in recent years. It, it still has good moments. The problem with it is the Natalie Portman character. Really? I... I saw it's it about a, three such, years after it came out. It's a really annoying manic pixie dream girl character, and and it just doesn't work. I, I I like some of the stuff with Zach Braff. Also, I blame that movie for me not being on antidepression medication for as long as I wasn't. Oh. I really do. Like, that movie, the whole, you know, he has that argument with his dad. I feel so fucking numb. Mm. And, and uh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, that stuck with me, and for years I was like, well, I don't want to feel numb. I want to feel like myself. Uh, and then just this past October, I got on uh, Paxil and changed mm-hmm. my life. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now you're now you're comfortably numb. Like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, though. That's very interesting. Okay. That's right. So, so I said Garden, Garden State. That was <laughs> yeah, okay. your number, that was your number, number eight. eight. Yeah, so. Mine yeah. is Anchorman. Okay, all right. Mm. My number seven is Hotel Rwanda. My number seven is the Friday Night Lights film. Never saw it. Yeah. Uh, my number six. Boy, I love this movie. I, I would. I guess I'd like. I'd like to see it again. See if it holds up. Um, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, I watched it like five years ago, and it still made me laugh a bunch. I, I don't okay. know about holding up exactly, but it <clears throat> worked okay. Okay. Uh, my number six is the documentary Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. <laughs> Which you uh, made me watch when we were roommates. And um, I still hated Metallica so much that it was hard for me to enjoy. I watched it again recently, and I still love it. Yeah, and I get why. Um, I just can't get past the fact that I have to watch Metallica. Um, yeah. Um, my number five is Fahrenheit 9-11. Yeah, um, uh, the movie I saw the day I graduated high school. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I went straight to the movies for my graduation ceremony. I saw uh, that twice, twice in theaters. Mm, I didn't love it at the time, but I bet you I'd like it more now in like with get some distance. Um, I saw. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to get into it. I had kind of a personal story there, but maybe it's too much. <laughs> no, we'll talk about it when we do the movie. There's a sequel coming out. Is it a direct sequel? I mean, it's called Fahrenheit 11.9. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. My yeah. number five is The Born Supremacy. That should be on my list. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, okay. Uh, number four for me, Anchorman. My number four is Alexander Payne's Sideways. That's my number three. My number three is Richard Linklater's Before Sunset. Hadn't seen it at the time. That would definitely be on my list now. Mm. Um, yeah, this list would be changed. Not all of it, but a few choices. Uh, but not my final two. Number two, one of your faves, uh, starring your favorite actor, The Aviator. Oh, <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, yeah. Academy Award winner Kate Blanchett for her weird Catherine Hepburn impersonation. Sure. That's a little um, much. My number two is Edgar Wright's masterpiece, Shaun of the Dead. Never saw it. Right. Mm-hmm. And my number one movie of 2004, I really got to say, I thought it was going to be your number one movie, but I guess I like it a lot more, and I'm sticking by it. Eternal uh, Sunshine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a Sunshine. great movie. It's a great movie, but I loved this year. I'm really happy with my list. My my number one is Kill Bill Volume Two. 
Yeah, and I really love that too. What the fuck was I thinking when I made this list? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I were we looking at the same uh, chart? <laughs> I don't know. Well, whatever. Yeah. I was there trying to go. be. Di- I was trying to be different. <laughs> yeah, and you're just fucking boring. <laughs> Ray. All right. Well, I do like Ray. I, I will say that. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I don't know if it's top 10 caliber. No. Uh, all, right. all right. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Uh, what, what's the plot, buddy? <laughs> Stop it. Go I ahead. Mean, it, 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 they're in Raccoon City. Yeah, this one's easier. Yeah. A, a lot easier. And there's zombies everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Right. right. Uh, yeah. There's a fun suburban opening uh, where we see, you know, it, it, it's very picket fences and people like mowing their lawns and, and watering their lawns and gardening and stuff. And yeah, I then, like that. Then there's uh, Jared Harris it shows up uh, in a wheelchair. Jared Harris, probably best known for me as uh lane price from Mad Men. me too he, i've yeah. seen him in a, a bunch of movies i realized afterwards but that's who he is to me too so yeah. yeah completely yes yes and he's like a genius and they want to uh figure out the well i mean what is it man why why do they need him he's the t-virus guy yeah he's the one who in- invented the virus so they need that he's not considered expendable because he is the one who probably knows most about it yeah uh yeah so they pick him up from his house and um then we meet kind of the main character of the movie which is this lady jill valentine <laughs> yeah yeah. And uh, I say she's the main character of the movie because she has. Uh, there's not enough Mila Jovovich. I fully agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, should I? I mean, I could already. I could do what you did in the last episode and give away something soon. Go but, ahead. I don't care. Yeah, she's my LVP. <gasps> oh no. Yeah, and and not necessarily the character. Um, the actress. Sienna uh, Guillory? Yeah, I'm not buying it. I didn't. I. I just. Uh, 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 it ties into the another just fucking too much of the 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 grimacing and the you know you know she arrives on the scene with this kind of authority that isn't even earned. Like you, what she's supposed to be like this disgraced uh, cop. cop, but you don't really you get zero reason or backstory you see like a couple of newspaper clips right that say disgraced cop (laughs) and i mean i don't need a biography but jesus give me something and and she just kind of rolls onto the scene and it's just like i i I did not care for that it was a it was a a downer would you have preferred the original casting of the character uh natasha henstridge from species definitely yeah okay <laughs> i like her yeah i don't mind sienna guillory in this movie she's not my lvp at all I, I i think the character jill valentine is a little more of like a prototypical strong female character quote hang, unquote hang, than... hang on hang on hang on so jill valentine uh yeah she's you know she's not the most interesting character in the world she's she, but and she, she's not the most interesting act, actress either. That's your beef. You don't like Sienna Guillory. Right? I guess, but I, I never saw her in my life. I mean, should I have? In some I, I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else either. But, I mean, she pops up again in the series. I don't mind her. I think um, she's... I hate that she's wearing that, like, fucking cheesecake tube top. Yeah, you know, that was funny to me. Like, I didn't, it was, I think that was an immediate problem. Like, watching her, like, suit up. Yeah. And, like, that's what she wears. <laughs> it's kind of like, what? It's really weird. I think it's, the- it's, it looks exactly like how the character looked in the comic. Like, that's, uh, that's the only, I mean, the, the video game. That's yeah, all yeah. they're doing. But, I mean, you know, come on. 
Come on, guys. <laughs> and it's funny because it, of, of all, you know, of all things to not be able to suspend your disbelief, I don't know why that bothered me. It, it would probably annoy me if someone else said that about a movie because that's not really my M.O. Things like that I don't pick on, um, you know, but I, it, was just, it was very strange yeah, uh, to buy. I don't know. So. Some, when she's on screen, I'm just like, show me what Alice is up to. Well, that me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, Alice is like a sort of a. She's. I mean, the problem is, you know, Valentine's got her own arc here, if you want to call it that, and and I don't think that's necessary. And an overarching problem. I mean, we'll get to it because she's going through the plot. But was that this was just much less inventive to me. Uh, this movie. Uh, well, because because we're expanding outward, and this movie. You know, while the first one took place underground in the hive, this one takes place in Raccoon City. Right. And what we have seen in almost every zombie movie ever made is an outbreak in a city. <laughs> right. Okay. Well. Well put. Yes. That. That. And that's what was just sort of a turnoff. And I think maybe in two thousand four, uh, I wouldn't have cared. But this is where my the oversaturation of zombie flicks really kicks in and you're just kind of like, Oh, uh, I mean, but I will say this when they went to the cemetery and the bodies start coming out of the, that was cool. Yeah, uh, that was cool. And I didn't expect it, uh, but I blame, I blame, mo I did not care for this film very much. And I blame the director. Oh, that's who I, I blame. I, I, yeah. He's the LVP. Yeah. That's who I blame because. But it's still ninety-four minutes. It's pretty fun. Mila Jovovich is badass. Um, yes, know. it's not. Ter it's not terrible. It was just coming on the heels of the first one for me. It was a disappointment. Which you really enjoyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a disappointment. I, I wasn't expecting it to be so conventional. I guess is my point. It's. It doesn't stand out in any distinguishing way. That like the first one did. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I I think I think it has some good moments though. The zombie kids. I, I agree. The, the, that's a good reveal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, you don't see zombie children because then you're just looking at dead children. I'm down with that. that. <laughs> it was it was cool. There yeah. was that one part where Uncle Buck is driving along <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Epps. First episode of the franchise ever. You were doing a franch. You were doing a what's going on type of thing before it was franchise update, and you told our listeners and me included uh, that Mike Epps would be playing Uncle Buck. Yeah, upcoming. This How'd that go? For this him? podcast has lasted longer than the Uncle Buck series, <laughs> but uh, Mike Epps he had a good little run there as Uncle Buck, and he's in this movie. He's my MVP. He's pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, he's funny. He's, you know, he's one of those characters where I think normally I wouldn't find their little cracks and remarks funny, but I thought they were funny. Well, I don't know if it was. I think he he delivered them well, and they were well timed. So well, it, it's still written by Paul W. S. Anderson, right? And and right. I like Paul Anderson as a writer, and uh, and I like Mike Epps mostly as an actor. I mean, Uncle Buck was shitty, but like he's also on a show on Stars called Survivor's Remorse. That's quite good. I don't think I know him from anything, man. Yeah, he's not a bad actor. He's in the Friday movies. That's what I know him from originally. I never saw those. Yeah. yeah. Day Day, I think his name is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's that one bit in this movie where he's driving along and um, he gets a look at some hookers. Yeah, and that was crazy. And they're topless and he's distracted and then they turn out to be zombies. <laughs> it's these crazy zombie hookers that with yeah. like their fake boobs just sticking out. It's yeah. nuts. That was crazy. And I, I you know what's so funny? It's like in in an, like maybe in any other movie or, or rather rather in any other franchise. One well, I still thought this. Okay, I'll admit, I still thought it was gratuitous. But my immediate thought wasn't gratuity. It was just like, oh, okay, yeah, that's perfect for this film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is kind of perfect for the movie, but it is gratuitous. I, of I course think, it is, I think yeah. this movie, it might be Alexander Witt's influence. Maybe he's gross. It, there is, like, a little bit more grossness. 
You mean like sex, the, sex check? Sexual yeah, like we listen? see yeah. Mila Jovovich naked in that first one, but it's, we're not like lingering on it. It's just like part no. of the story. And this one, like there's the zombie hookers with the fake boobs. It's Jill Valentine bouncing around their fucking tube top. It's <laughs> it's real weird. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah. I think so. And so basically what? They they have they quarantine uh Raccoon uh, City. Right. And they, but then when the people don't want to leave the protection area, they just start opening fire on them. So basically it's a survival movie, not unlike uh AVP Requiem, right? I Where- brought that up. Uh the the ending of this movie is oddly very reminiscent of the AVP movie that Paul W.S. Anderson did not write. So refresh my memory on the AVP Requiem ending, because Do I don't... The, the, remember the whole thing takes place in like a little town? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was referencing, but I don't remember how it ends. Yeah. They fucking nuke the town. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. what happens here. Raccoon City gets wiped off the face of the earth. Right, 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 right. I didn't remember they nuked it in, in Requiem. Yeah, okay. and then they yeah. get out. It's just like the first movie. Mila Jovovich gets like taken into an umbrella facility, but then she gets sprung by Jill Valentine, uh, Mike Epps, and Oded Fair from the Mummy yeah. films, who we haven't brought up yet. Just... What's he from? The Mummy films? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Such a boring actor. <laughs> just so dull as fucking dishwater. Well, guy. look... <laughs> Can I steal that for my everyday life? You, it's from stuff. I didn't come up with I've it. I've never heard of it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Uh, all right. Dull as dishwater. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, we should mention in this movie, Jovovich is pretty is a superhuman by this point. That's yeah, yeah. Which is great. Work. Which is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, part of this movie is, um, you know, we get set up with the, the what's his name? Eric Mabius, that character, yeah. he, he gets taken into the Nemesis program at the end of the movie. And what that means is he's turned into this giant monster that they call Nemesis. Yeah. Which is from Resident Evil 3, the video game. I've never played, but uh, that was like the main boss was Nemesis. Yeah, I, I didn't think that worked as well for a couple of reasons. One, I, I, was it supposed to be a surprise to us that it was... Uh, Matt? No, 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 no. I think it was supposed to be okay. a surprise to Mila Jovovich, to Alice. Yeah, I didn't think she wouldn't have figured that out, but that's okay. It's uh, one of those cheese ball things where, like, she sees the humanity in his eyes. Yeah, his, his <laughs> eye. Yeah. His eye. <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't think it worked also because he does that. They really steal from, like, uh, Terminator and Robocop, like, especially in the sequence when he's, like, annihilating those armed soldiers and then like his his fucking readout says mm. like uh, unarmed civilian and so he lets him go you know yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like all right that's not very original and i gotta say i'm look i i am looking for originality in these in these movies because uh because of the first one i thought so eh. yeah uh <laughs> yeah so i mean that's it you got anything else to say about this? She fights the nemesis thing. Like, right. I mean, he turns against the Umbrella Corporation. The humanity inside of him lets him do that and right. um, kills some people. They rescue Jared Harris's daughter. That's like a big section of this movie. That's the kind of pl- problem with this movie is it doesn't really have a plot. It's just like they're in this town. They have to do a few things. And that's, yeah, right. and that's the 94 minutes. It's the video game. You're given yeah. tasks. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Completed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And at the end, I did I did like the ending in terms of because I know I'm going to be watching three and the rest uh, in that now the Umbrella Corporation has seized control of Mila Jovovich. That's right. In her, her mind. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't see that coming. I got to say. I mean, I sort of did when Ian Glenn, the actor, the, whoever he plays. He Isaacs. plays Dr. Isaacs. Jason yeah, Isaacs. Yeah, right. right. He, and he kind of lets her go. I figured something was up. But uh I wasn't really sure, so that was cool, and I'm looking forward to three and four. I got that's take. right. So all right. overall, I'm 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 gonna give it a two. I'm still giving it a three. I can't get, bring myself to give a Resident Evil movie under a three. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I, I think two is fair. Mm, uh, it is fair. 
And I'm going to give the MVP, like I said, to Mike Epps and my LVP to Jill Valentine. I'm still going Mila Jovovich, MVP. And my LVP uh, is the director. That's It's just not as good. Totally. Yeah, that's totally understandable. Yeah. I got, I got, a, I got a superhero count here. Uh, I got five. Jesus. All right. Yeah, the girl who plays the reporter. Terry oh Mar- yeah, uh, she's in stuff. I've seen that actress and things. Was well, she in House of she, Cards? I think she's in the first season of House of Cards. Oh, I don't know. She might be mm-hmm. Sandrine Holt. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, she was in something I didn't know existed, which was a 2009 TV series, The Phantom. Uh, all right. Yeah, did you not know about that? No, it, never heard of that. And it is about based apparently on The Phantom. She played a character in that, who I won't name because it's irrelevant. Um, Oded Fear. <laughs> sure. Played uh, Mr. Freeze in Batman Unlimited. All right. Now uh, Tim Kane, the one who uh, the the guy under Isaacs and former vice presidential nominee, uh, <laughs> played by Thomas Kreshman. Uh, Big resume on this guy's superheroes. Uh, he was in Captain America: Winter Soldier and Avengers Two. I yeah, he's, he's Baron von Strucker. Yeah, I don't That's, remember. I don't remember him at all. It's a pretty important um, Marvel character, actually. He, he's sort of yeah. like the Red Skull's right hand man. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I just didn't remember him at all. And he's also in Blade Two, oh. playing playing Eli Demakamaki. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jared Harris, you're gonna love this one. I, I I had to throw it in there. I had to. Do okay. you do you remember when one of our favorite movies, Watchmen, came out? <laughs> they had the DVD with the Tales of the Black Freighter. Sure. Yeah, he played Ridley in that motion. Sure. Speaking of motion, oh, he was like a pirate, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yes, yeah, Zach. Thanks, buddy. Excellent work, Mr. Snyder. I <clears throat> have to have him back soon. Um, and my fifth one, this is a conflict of whether to include, because it's from a comic, so I didn't know, but I included it. Ian Glenn, uh, who plays the new Isaacs, uh, was in Kick-Ass 2. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a superhero, I guess. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Mark Millar, right? So yeah. I figured... Gotta include those kick-ass movies, so. Millar Jovovich. That's <laughs> That's barely a joke. That's great. All right. Uh, All right. Let's move on to next week.